Hi, I'm Luke Hindmarsh. And I'm Damien Humphreys. We are... In Deep Crit. Welcome back to uh, the pit of crit. Uh, this time we are uh, we're going to be looking at some philosophical questions, roleplay philosophy, problem solving. We're not quite sure yeah. what to call this yet, uh, but but let's let's start off with the other evening we were playing in Damien's Icewind Dale campaign, and a situation arose where two players had to make two different roles for the same thing. I'll let you explain it more. Um, but yeah, that's sort yeah, of a topic. Um... So yeah, we're we're looking we're looking at skill checks, uh, not not just in Dungeons and Dragons, but in most role playing systems have a, a skill system attached to them in in some form or another. What skill do you use and when, and is it okay to ask for different skill checks? Uh, so in Icewind Dale on Saturday, uh, the characters had a an, an object described to them which was appearing as a, like a appeared as like a shard of black ice but wasn't ice um, i'm not going to give too much in case that i give some spoilers some of you who have played ice Dale will know what i'm talking about others others won't yet but it, they had this object described to them. they hadn't actually seen the object uh, and they were trying to work out what it was and so what I did was I gave the the mage in the party who has comes from a research background. I let them make an arcana check, and then we also have a druid in the party who is a local to Icewind Dale, uh, and I let them make a history check. Yeah. And I actually set the DCs at different levels, so I set a higher level. So I set a DC of of eighteen for the for the researcher. But only a DC of ten for for the local druid, um, and what they and I decided that what they knew about this stuff may be slightly different depending on their, their approach, um, and they they actually both passed, uh, so I was able to give some quite detailed information on what they thought it was and the history of the object going right back to um, the days of of Drizid and and before and and all that kind of thing. Um, as a as a player, Luke, how did that how did that feel to you? Did that feel okay? Did it feel fair? Did it? I mean, I wasn't one of the players who made the roles. Uh, it, it it was to me, it made perfect sense. I don't think you just gave the the same result. I think you also it's, it seemed to me anyway. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but it seemed that the the, the wizard player got the more sort of arcane side of yeah. things explained, and the druid got the more sort of this is the history of this object within the context of Icewind Dale, but they both kind of knew the same things. You, you put a different spin on each bit of information, um, which they then sure, sort yeah. of yeah. praised for the rest of us, made it so, that, so we all knew as well. Um, I don't think it's a problem. I mean, I, so uh, using different skills for different players can be something that causes a lot of discontent, depending on how it's done but also who's on the receiving end. Because I think you did it... Okay. I think you did it in the right way. I think it was the right situation to do that. Um, some players might react negatively and think, oh, well, hang on. I think I think if, say, say for example, the, the Druid's uh, history was a rubbish score and they had a good Arcana, they might say, well, hang on, I want to make the Arcana check. Um, we didn't really have that situation arise, so... Yeah. I think the question then would for me would have been what would you have done if say it'd been me and I'd said well hang on I have a really high arcana score as well or I've got proficiency at least I want to roll arcana uh, not history why am I having to roll history when he's rolling arcana how you deal with that is then potentially an issue um, yeah, what would yeah, you have absolutely. done if that was the case uh, I'd just tell you no <laughs> yeah. <told>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you probably would um, um no, I think it's so. Uh, personally, I think it's important as a DM that skill checks are made when I ask for them. Um, you know, I sometimes I don't ask for a skill check, and I will give some information, or I will describe something, or you find something um, because you don't need a skill check for that. Yeah. Um, other times there will be a skill check attached, and I don't like players going, "Oh, I roll for insight." Um, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If a player's if a player's going, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not sure about this character. I'll say, well, give me an insight check. Yeah. 
So I think that that's and it's and it's about knowing the characters as well. So I have I don't have copies of the character sheets open all the time, but I do have a spreadsheet with some pertinent information for each character, and so I know each character's strengths and weaknesses to an extent. Uh, so in that case, had you asked, I would probably have said yes. It would be an Arcana check for you, yeah, because of your background and and your class, um, and and your proficiencies. I don't have... Had, yeah. You wouldn't want... Had, I would have been very unhappy with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a warlock with had, no arcana proficiency. <laughs> had the druid had a higher yeah. arcana, then yeah, that, yeah absolutely. Um, I would have said, you can choose either, but you'll get different information. So I, I have... One of the campaigns that I've been running for some time is a traveller campaign. Um, and within that, you're a player. Generally, I, I think I do things... I do things quite like you, but not it's exactly the same, where I will sometimes make a call for a specific skill check, and sometimes I will make a call for a skill check and say to the player, what should it? What do you want to use to resolve this situation? You need to make a skill check. It seems like you're doing maybe this or maybe that. Um, but I don't like you. I, I don't... It's not for... The, I don't think it's for the players to choose to say, well, I want to roll this now. I think it's for GM to, or DM to assess and say, this is a situation where I, you're wanting to do something and there's an uncertainty about the outcome. Um, that means I, it's... I a, once ran briefly for a group that um, would walk into a room and say, I walk into the room and I roll perception to see what I can find. <laughs> really? Like I said, I ran, brief, I ran briefly for that group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Going in and saying, yeah. oh, I want to search every nook and cranny of this room. I want to find out what's in it. Or, you know, we're on the, yeah. we're about to board the spaceship. I want to check the sensors. Well, okay. So that's obviously going to result in a perception check for being in the dungeon or a sensor, electronic sensors check in Traveller, for example. Um, yeah. You know, we've been looking yeah. at Alien. Oh, I, I want to look at the motion. So my, my key advice for Alien um, Game Mothers was not to, not to let the time, the usage of the, motion track would be too much in the player's hands but to have it as a are you using it okay here's what it detects um yeah yeah um you know if a, if a player tells me they're spending 20 minutes half an hour checking every surface of every wall in a room and there's a secret door there i'm going to tell them they found that secret door yeah, yeah. something else may happen in that time they spend yeah, you yeah. Know, if you yeah, want, yeah, yeah. But if you want to spend half an hour in a dungeon looking, you know, you, you're going to find it. Yeah. For me, sometimes those skill checks, particularly with perception investigation, that's about finding something relatively quickly or or noticing that oddity in the room that draws your attention to it. I think um, I think there's something else we both do. Um, though most notably, my warlock has been playing the guitar in because it's the whole crossroads story. Uh, yeah, really badly. But I, I think I've rolled, like, ones on the both occasions, or three occasions I've tried to do it. It's been a right come up to one. But you've not done it as a succeed or fail check. It's just that how well have you done at this? And the answer yeah. is, yeah, not very well. But it didn't, like, cause a problem, or it was just a flavour <laughs> issue. Yeah, and um, uh, that, that's great. Um, and I think we're going to draw this video to a close in a moment, but... Um, and that's something else I'll say about skill checks, particularly in D&D. Um, I see a lot of people using the crit fail and crit success system for skill checks in, in Dungeons and & Dragons. And your table, do what you like. It's not, yeah. it's not rules as written. And I think, I think that you're setting yourself up for a headache then. Um, you know, so your, your performance checks, for example, yeah, you rolled a one, but your performance is so good that that was still a seven. Yes. Which it's is true. a slightly less than average result. Yeah, just not so appalling. You weren't on your game. It wasn't awful. You know, the second time the the crowd stayed for another pint, and then you didn't get any better, so they left. You know, it, it, yeah. there's there's a narrative way, and also if you roll a twenty on a skill check, you're not going to persuade the dragon to sleep with you. You're not going to persuade the king to give you his kingdom. You should. You, you shouldn't. You shouldn't to, do anyway. You might persuade the dragon to not kill you for a little while because yeah. you've amused it. You might persuade the king to not throw you in prison for insolence immediately. Yeah. 
you know, you can't jump to the moon just because you roll a 20 on an athletics check. It, I, so it, mechanically... Yeah, I, the impossible is still impossible. Yeah, absolutely. And I think mechanically one of the things... So I prefer players to be like, well, you want to, you want to seduce the dragon? Okay, role play that. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, yeah. then I can set a DC and then you can roll against that DC. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'm not saying how it's going to result, but... <laughs> Come on, you want to do it, so role play. Um, I mean, just role play well, you might even get advantage. Yeah, maybe, absolutely. I mean, and without without stretching the length of the video, because we are trying to keep this relatively short. So I've, I've encountered a situation, I'm not going to go into the details of it too much, with another game, not you as GM, a GM who I, I play with online in the Cyberpunk system, Cyberpunk Red system, very accomplished GM, wants to two different characters to use two different skills for essentially doing something that seemed quite similar. However, the circumstances were, were a little bit different. And with a system like Cyberpunk uh, Red, uh, which is a certain other system we may look at uh, in due course for review, um, it's very skill-based. So where D&D has a number of proficiencies, but it's like a handful. Traveller has a ton. Cyberpunk has loads. Alien doesn't have a huge number. Um, the, the more specific skill systems tend to have ones that cross over a little bit and it's a bit difficult to know which one to choose at any given moment. I don't know about you, but I mean, I'm not, I don't keep a record of all. on this occasion I ask this person to make this role and on the next occasion I ask someone else to make a different skill check because you, as a GM you call it as you see it in the moment. And obviously you try and be fair, but whatever it is that makes you feel that that's a, I don't know, a, an electronics computer role in Traveller, for example, versus an engineering role in Traveller or a mechanics role in Traveller, is what's the situation at the time. That's, I mean, that's the way yeah. I approach it. No, no, um, uh, so I can think of a, a kind of D&D example. Yeah. Dead body on the floor. How did this person die? Medicine check, they were poisoned. Nature check for what type of poison was used. Yeah. Investigation check, maybe... Yeah. Oh well, was it was it done with a How dagger it or yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's there are crossovers and there are yeah. If your DM's asking you for a skill check, or if you as a DM are asking for a skill check, go with what feels right at the time. Yeah, and that may be different for different players, but for different characters, and it may be different for different situations on different days. As well. Same character, different day, on different days. different play session, yeah. uh, because the situation is evolving and, and moving on. And I think, I think. That's probably more... GMs have to just trust themselves. Whatever system you're playing, however yeah. new you are to it or whatever, you're making the judgment calls. Trust yourself. As a player, yes. If you've got a GM who's always like their word is law, I, personally, that's not the way I roll. I don't think that's the way you roll. GMs should be willing to listen. But you have to trust them to be having your best interest as a player and the, the story that you're all collectively telling at heart. Um, yeah. So. And if you feel really hard done by, have that conversation after the game. Yeah. Uh, so take take the ruling, have that conversation, and say, look, I felt actually, you know, and the rules back me up here, and that's a conversation for outside of the game, and then that's up to the DM to say, okay, yeah, I made a mistake and I rule it differently next time, or actually, what you're saying makes no sense, and I'm going to rule it this way. Yeah, or 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 I hear what you're saying it does make sense, but I don't agree. I mean, it doesn't have to get. I think. I think the ultimate thing is the ability to let it go because it's, it's a game. It's important to us as a game. It's a hobby that we inject a lot of ourselves into, but it's still a game, and everyone deserves to have fun. So, yeah, I haven't got anything more to say about it. Do you? No, me, me neither. No, you know, uh, we hope you've had fun listening to us here. We hope we have um, succeeded at least on a, a performance or possibly a persuasion check. Um, and I probably yeah, rolled we'll another natural one. <laughs> I rolled another natural <laughs> one. I only roll natural ones on charms, charisma based skills. <laughs> we will. We will see you next time um, for another video discussing all things role playing. See you next time. Thank you very much. See ya. Sure.